Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Majora's Mask. As you can see, we have reset time here to dawn of the first day, and I only have three hearts left, and that is because I've been doing some serious rupee grinding off screen. First things first, let's go ahead and uh, slow down time. Like I think I've said before, it's always a good idea to do this whenever you reset time. So yes, let's slow it down and get this fancy little animation out of the way. There we go. Alright, so like I said, I've been doing some serious rupee grinding off screen, so what I'm going to do here is kind of take you through one little run of my rupee grinding process, I guess. So uh, let's get to it. The first thing we're going to do, um, there are 200 rupee chests that we're going to be picking up in order to fill up our 200 rupee wallet, of course. Uh, the first one is here in the bomber's hideout. This one takes a little bit because you got to stop here and, you know, say the code every single time, but... Um, in the end, it's really much faster than any other alternative, at least I would say so. Um, a couple people have suggested other things like going to kill the, the giant bird that's outside of uh, Milk Road, which we haven't been to yet, but um, which I guess would work, but I just kind of prefer it this way either way. So um, I think I've already shown getting this chest before. I'm pretty sure I have. So we're going to swim up here and do this. and grab this 100 rupee chest. Now, the reason I'm down to three hearts is because I kept getting hit by that Skull on the way back out. I found that if you want to be safe about it, you really have to go on the outside. I was trying to cut it on the inside, and I got hit by him so many times. Um, in fact, I think he only takes off a half of a heart, and considering I've lost five, and I think I even picked up a heart or two along the way at some point, so I probably got hit, I don't know, 15 times by it, but... <laughs> Alright, and then once you get this one, you're in perfect position to just head to the left and make this little jump across here in order to pick up the next chest. So you just jump across these. I'm pretty sure I've also shown this as well. In fact, I'm pretty sure, um, actually, yeah, I know I have, because uh, I, I, I fell through the stairs whenever I got it last time, so... <laughs> Alright, so we open that chest, and we've now filled up our wallet with 200 rupees, so all that's left to do would be to jump up here. And we fall through the stairs again. That's always awesome. And then now we're going to go deposit in the bank. And as you can see, we're pretty much right in line to do that too. So it kind of just makes a nice little circle, you know, from the top of East Clocktown to the bottom of West Clocktown. And it really works out pretty well. So here we go. We go to the bank. And this is going to be the last time I need to deposit. So let's go ahead and make a deposit. And uh, as you'll soon see, check out how many rupees I have. 4,886. Yeah, I got that many. So we're going to go ahead and deposit our 200 here, which will bump us up over 5,000. And... Yep, 5,086. What's this? You've already saved up 5,000 rupees. Well, little guy, I can't take any more deposits. Sorry, but this is all I can give you. And for doing all that work, you get a piece of heart. So, one of the more annoying and tedious pieces of heart in the game, but, well, if you want to get 100%, you got to do it. So, you just kind of have to uh, soldier on through it. So, now I'm going to withdraw the rupees that I just deposited, because we're going to be playing a few more mini games around Glock Town. So, let's go ahead and fill up our wallet once again. And he's going to be so depressed that I took out so much money, but it's okay, because I have literally 4,800 more in the bank. So... <laughs> Okay, so we're going to go back over to East Clocktown. That's actually where both of the minigames, there are two that I'm going to be doing. Um, that's where both of the minigames are, so let's head back over here. Easiest to take the south entrance for the first one. In fact, it's that door right there, the one that I think I pointed out in the last part. So uh, let's check this out, and this is, of course, the town shooting gallery. So we're going to be doing even more with our bow and arrows. Now, the town shooting gallery is notorious for being probably the most annoying heart piece to get once you try to do all this. So let's talk to this guy and get the thing started. Think you can do it? Why don't you give it a try, Sonny? One game is 20 rupees. Okay. All right, Sonny, the rules are simple. Hit as many red ones as you can within the time limit. If you hit a blue one, you lose time, so watch out. You can use as many arrows as you'd like. Press B to shoot them. Yep, so it's yet another shooting gallery. Their highest score is 39. Keep that in mind, because our first goal is to just beat the uh, course record, so to speak. And then the second goal is to get a perfect score. So, um, let's see what we're going to do here. So we're going to have to be shooting the red, quote-unquote, Octoroks. They're just normal Octoroks. Basically, don't shoot the blue ones. You'll know what they look like when you see them. Um, that one in the middle right there is a blue one, obviously. If you shoot them, then you will lose time, so you don't want to do that. And in order to get a perfect score, you actually can't shoot any blue ones, because you won't have enough time to shoot all the uh, regular ones. 
So here, pretty much you just got to shoot them as they come up. If you play this game a lot and have a lot of practice, you can kind of start to memorize what the patterns are. And that'll help a little bit. Also, a good tip for doing this is, um, crap. Okay, well, that's okay. I don't really... Oh, well, I still might get a perfect score here. Uh, shoot that one. That one. Okay, man, I'm cutting these really close. All right, now these three are in a row. That one's pretty easy, but... Um, also, as I was saying, a good tip to doing this is to go from, like, either left to right or right to left. It's very tempting to start in the middle and then sort of, like, go back and forth between the two. Oh, yeah, I hit a blue one, so I definitely will get a perfect score here. But um, it's, like, it's tempting to go, like, from the middle and then to both sides, but a lot of times you really don't have enough time to do that. Wow, I hit another blue one. That's okay. I'm not aiming for a perfect score this first time around, so it really doesn't matter too much. Um, in fact, right now, as you can see, I've already beaten the course record. It was only 39, so... Um, he's going to tell us here, well, look at that. He hit 45. That's a new record. Well, here you go. And for that, we're going to get the largest quiver. So, yeah, we've completely upgraded our bow already, and we just got it. So, there we go. All right, and now, like I said before, it's going to be much like the uh, Woodfall shooting gallery in that we're going to have to get a perfect score in order to grab a piece of heart from this guy. So, if I don't do it on this try, then I will pretty much, you know, work my usual editing magic and all that nonsense, and uh, we will get a perfect score. So, good luck. There you go, perfect score. And yes, that was actually the first try right after I said that. I wasn't talking because I really wanted to concentrate on that, so... True, there you go. I didn't... I did not imagine that I would be doing this in two tries, so... There you go. So we get the perfect score and grab the piece of heart, so we only need one more to extend our life energy, which is pretty cool. So now we're done with this. As you can see, I still have 160 rupees left, so that was uh, literally the first try right after I said it, so that is pretty cool. That game can be very, very difficult if you're having trouble. All I can advise is practice, practice, practice. Alright, so now, like I said, we do have another game to be playing, and this one I honestly probably like a little bit less than the shooting gallery we just did. This is Hunting and Darling Shop, um, a gaming center changing daily, and of course that's kind of our clue that we're going to have to come back here um, all three days, much like the Deku Square Playground. So, we go in, and you probably remember these guys from Ocarina of Time. They were dancing around in uh, Hyrule Castle Town day and night, pretty much all the time. So, let's talk to them, and they're really annoying, by the way. It looks like we have a visitor, honey. Now, I'm not sure which one's which here. I think the man says honey, but no, that's just my guess. Okay, yeah, I guess so. I wonder if it's a customer, darling. Oh, would you like to play? Today is Banshu Gallery Day, isn't it, darling? One game is ten rupees. Okay. Hit each target with a Banshu in the time it takes us to dance through one song. But if you fall off this platform, you're out, right, darling? Are you ready? Start the music. All right, so they're going to dance around here, ignore them, and we're going to have to hit these targets on the wall with Bonchu, which, as you might be able to imagine, is a lot harder than it might seem. I mean, you've got to be pretty close to the target. I mean, it does give you a little bit of leeway, but um, it can be very hard to tell exactly where the Bonchu is going. This camera doesn't really help too much, because um, it kind of lags a little bit behind you, so you just have to anticipate it. And to make matters worse... Okay, yep, see, I missed another one. And to make matters worse, as time goes on, this platform is going to start moving faster and faster. You can probably already see it now. And once it gets to this point, you really just kind of start scrambling and panicking a little bit, so... Um, Alright, well, at least I got that one out of the way. Just gotta get this one. I've tried this, like, five times, and I haven't gotten it. Okay, there we go. Got that one. 
there's another one right there. I was horrible. Went exactly in between two of them. Oh, nope. Missed that one, too. And as you can see, we're about to run out of time. This game is not fun. Like I said, I really do not like this. So we're definitely not going to get it this time. But um, let's see. We still had three targets to go, which I guess isn't too bad. But um, like I said, this game, it, it's just its kind of bad. So, <laughs> All right. So we're going to play this again. And this time we're going to win it. So uh, yes, I would like to play. Come on. Let me go. All right. Let's do it. Holy crap, look at that. That is the best I have ever done on that game. Oh, man. Yeah, the key is really to get as many as you can the first time around before the platform starts speeding up. So, there we go. Got a perfect score, and we have to share our happiness with them, honey. And for doing that, we get a purple rupee, which pretty much just makes back all the money we spent on the last few games. So, there we go. That's beating it on day one. Now we're obviously going to have to go back out and advance time forward a little bit in order to beat it on days two and three. Alright, so we're back here in Honey and Darling's shop on day number two. And as you can see, the things along the wall have changed a little bit. We've now got these baskets hanging up. So let's talk to them and see what the uh, game is on day two. Looks like we have a visitor. I wonder if it's a customer. Uh, yeah, perfect score yesterday. Today is Basket Bomb Day. Ooh, nice. Basket Bomb. So one game is ten rupees. Once again, we have to get a bomb in every basket. If you throw with too much power, you'll fall off the platform. So obviously, you don't want to do that. But this game, actually, I think is considerably easier than day one. Um, <laughs> okay, well, there you go. You jump off. So <laughs> so he said, that's what I told you. Yeah, if you try to, like, really throw it, then oftentimes you'll just sort of fall off a platform like that. So I guess it's good that we went ahead and got that out of the way. So now let's uh, let them hurry up and let me play again. And this time, let's do it the right way. So uh, pretty much all you have to do is just throw the bombs in the basket. It's actually a lot easier than it seems. Um, your aim really only has to be somewhat decent. If you hit the sides, most of the time it'll still bounce in. And you don't really even need to worry about whether it's um, like high up on the wall or low on the wall. Except I guess that time I kind of bounced it off the wall. So, oh man, I'm <laughs> having trouble with that one. All right, throw it. Nope, missed it. Okay, try it again. <laughs> there we go. Oh man, see, uh, that one was way off. There's no way that should have gone in. I pretty much like hit the bottom of the basket, but it still worked. And we got that one, and that one, and that should be the last one. Yeah, see, that blows up, and we get a perfect score. So like I said, that one's actually pretty easy, and you have quite a lot of time to do it. The platform also doesn't seem to spin near as fast as it did with the Bomb Chew game, so... There we go, we got another perfect score, they're going to share their happiness with us again, which, once again, is a purple rupee. Which is kind of nice, I guess, because we're basically playing these games for free now. So, going to go back out, advance time, and play on day three. Alright, so we're back in Honey and Darling's shop one last time on the final day. This time you can see there are targets along the wall, so imagine what we're going to do here. It's like we have a visitor, I wonder if it's a customer. Uh, you're the one who got a perfect score two days in a row, that's me. So today is target shooting day, obviously. So, one game's 20 rupees. This is all pretty self-explanatory. You want to shoot all the targets. Again, another arrow game. So, I hope you've gotten better at this with the last few shooting galleries, but... Uh, anyway, I guess there are kind of a number of ways to take this on, but I really just like to take the targets one at a time. And then when you see these two in front of you, just hold off. Uh, you don't want to hit them too much, I believe, or it will end the game. Um, and then otherwise, pretty much just keep going, just sort of go up and down. Make sure to also compensate for uh, the way the platform is sort of bobbing there. So hit that one, hit that one. Now we got we missed one in the middle here. There it is. And then when things start rumbling, that also makes it a little bit harder. But there you go. You finish that one off and get a perfect score as well. So days two and three really are so much easier than the bomb chew one on day one. But <laughs> honey, he got a perfect score three days in a row. This is all we have left to give him, honey. <laughs> That's right, I cleaned these guys out entirely. That's awesome. So we get another piece of heart and assemble a new heart container, which is going to bring us up to nine hearts. Believe it or not, we've almost filled out the first row of hearts already, which I think is insane, because we pretty much just started this game. So um, that's that's <laughs> just that's something crazy, you know. But 
Alright, so we're about at 15 minutes. I guess this episode will just be a mini-game episode. There's actually one more thing that I want to do here on the final day before we reset time and actually um, start to make our way forward again in the story. So we're going to do that next time, then we'll reset and uh, see what comes up next. So until then, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.